Super. So now we move on to the second of the organic families, the second of the organic homologous series, which we're going to look at, which is, or well, which are called the alkenes. Now alkenes are slightly different to alkanes, but they're made by cracking long chain alkanes. Now what cracking really means is chopping up. Long chain alkanes aren't particularly useful. We've got too much of them. Um, we don't know what to do with them all. Um, so what we can do is rather than just throwing them away or trying to dispose of them, we can take these surplus long chain alkanes and chop them up, crack them into shorter alkanes. So short alkanes and alkenes. Now we do that in industry using a temperature of 600 degrees C, or actually 600 to 700 degrees C, and a catalyst of aluminium oxide. So let's show you what happens. So let's take, for example, uh, a long chain alkane decane. Now decane has 10 carbons. It's C10H, well, 2N plus 2, so H22. Now we can choose where we want to chop it up. In an exam, they will probably tell you how they want it chopped up. So I'm going to suggest an alkane that we could produce. Let's produce uh, pentane. So let's have C5H12 being produced. Notice that it's two lots of 5 plus 2 H12. We then need to work out what's the alkene we make in that process. So the alkene is basically what's left over. So in this process we've got five carbons left over and we've got, well, let's have a look, ten hydrogens left over. So C5H10 and that's an alkene and we know it's not an alkane because it's got a different general formula. It doesn't fit the CnH2n plus 2 general formula. And that alkene is called pentene. And looking at this we can see very quickly that our general formula is Cn, oh, I don't know why I've written the two, I don't know why I can't use the board all of a sudden, uh, probably due to my ineptness on my computer, but CnH2n. So we've got double the number of hydrogen to the number of carbons we've got. Now we describe alkenes as unsaturated hydrocarbons. Unsaturated means that instead of just having single covalent bonds, they also contain a double covalent bond. And hopefully you also remember the definition of hydrocarbons from last time, which was it's a compound that contains carbon and hydrogen only. And that only is so vital. Okay, carbon and hydrogen only, and it also contains a double bond. Now this double bond means that our alkenes are really reactive. If we put an alkene in bromine water. Now bromine water is a nice orange liquid. Bromine water doesn't stay orange for very long if you put an alkene in there. It goes from orange to colourless. And that tells you very quickly that an alkene is present. And that is a very popular question on the exam. What's the test for an alkene? It turns bromine water colourless from orange. Now Having taken these surplus long chain alkanes and cracked them into alkanes and alkenes, what do we then use our alkenes for? Well, one of the major uses is that alkenes are used to make plastics and polymers, and we'll come on to that at the end. And alkenes also make brilliant fuels. Very short chains generally make very good fuels. So, let's move on. Let's have a look at the alkenes in greater detail. So ethene. Eth tells you, well meerkats enjoy, that it's got two carbons. Now that's the only place the double bond can go. And then if we look at drawing the rest of ethene, you'll see that this carbon's got two bonds. Hydrogen. Hydrogen. That carbon's happy now. It's got four bonds. Hydrogen. Hydrogen. So that's ethene. So if we do a quick check, C2H4, there's its molecular formula. Propene is the next in the series. Meerkats enjoy proper, so three carbons. Here's my three. Okay, 
put a double bond in, you only need one double bond, okay, in alkenes. So let's put the double bond there. It could have gone there. It would have been the same thing. Now let's have a look at this carbon. It's already got two bonds, three bond, four bonds. This middle carbon has now got four bonds because it already had three. And this carbon on the end needs three because it started with one. And hopefully you can do a quick check of your molecular formula, C3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, H6. So that's propene. Bulking up a bit, making it going along the chain one more, you get to butene. Now butene has four carbons. Meerkats enjoy proper banter. Banter, the fourth in the series. And let's pick a place for the double bond. Let's put it in the middle. So let's work our way along. This carbon's got one bond, so it needs three. This carbon actually has got three bonds, so it only needs one. Likewise, this one's got three, so it only needs one. And this one at the end's got one, so it needs three. So there you have butene. Now, you might choose to vary butene. You can quickly check, and you can see that it's C4H8. But that's not the only way we could draw butene. We could have stuck the double bond at the end of the chain. And let's do a quick check of where the other hydrogens go. Actually, we've got two here, because it's got two bonds. One here. It's already got two here, so one up here, one down there, and then three off this. And if you're doing a very quick check of the number of hydrogens, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Brilliant. It fits the same molecular formula. But unfortunately, it's not the same structure. Okay, they're both butene, but they're not the same structure. So the relationship, or how we describe their relationship, they are isomers of each other. We've got the same molecular formula, but a different structure. Now the question you might now ask is, well, instead of putting the double bond at this end, what about if I put it at the other end? Now if I put it at the other end, all that does is effectively it has a double bond on the other end of the molecule. It doesn't matter which way round you draw it, whether it's at the left or at the right, it's still got a double bond at the end carbon. So these two, if I drew it out properly, are exactly the same. They are isomers. They are not isomers of each other. They're just the same thing. If you're being really clever with, clever with your isomers, you could also maybe put a branch in, like we saw in the original video. So instead of having uh, four carbons in a chain, you could have three and then a junction to a third carbon. And then we could try and put a double bond on that and fill in the hydrogens as appropriate. So that's one, two, three, four. Oh no, you wouldn't have a, you wouldn't have a bond down there because the carbon's already got four bonds. That would need three. That would need three down there. And we could do a quick check when we put our hydrogens on. I'm not going to put them on now, but it's still fulfilled that. And if I've done that correctly, it should be fine. So that's how to draw our alkenes. We've looked at butene that has isomers of each other. I hopefully have answered the question, which is that if we drew the double bond here, that would just be the same thing. It wouldn't be an isomer. And we're now going to go on to look at polymers. So. Addition polymers. Well, addition polymerization means addition, well, addition is where only the polymer forms in the reaction. You don't make any other products. And polymerization is the word used to describe making a polymer. And a polymer, now you need to write this down and learn it, a polymer is a long chain molecule of repeating monomer units. So the easiest one to show here is polyethene. So let's take ethene. Okay, so ethene contains two carbons and four hydrogens. And let's take many ethenes. And if we provide the right amount of heat and a catalyst and the right amount of pressure, this double bond will break. And in the ethene next to it, the double bond will break and ethene next to it, the double bond will break. And these spare bonds 
will then link the ethene units together. Now the way we show this is by drawing what's called a repeat unit. So the repeat unit, we take the two carbons where the double bond was. And we draw a rugby goal off them. And we then draw two bonds out with brackets around it. That's our basic structure. And you'll see the basic structure for all the others is just the same. And we then take each carbon in turn. We say, ah, oh, that carbon where the double bond was has a hydrogen and a hydrogen off it. One, two. This carbon here where the double bond was has a hydrogen and a hydrogen off it. H, H. And we have N lots of those. And that's polyethene. And that's the plastic which is used to make carrier bags. Okay? And drinks bottles for non-carbonated drinks. So your Evian okay, bottles will be in polyethene bottles. Now polychloroethene. Chloroethene is very similar to ethene. It's just got a chlorine off it, very surprisingly. And to show the repeat unit, you do pretty much the same thing. You take your carbons, draw that nice rugby post arrangement with the bonds, and then take each carbon in turn. So here's the first carbon, hydrogen, 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 hydrogen. Second carbon, oh, chlorine, hydrogen. So let's put a chlorine up there and a hydrogen over there. And that's polychloroethene, a very robust polymer. And we use that to make window frames and drain pipes very strong. Now I'm going to change colour for polypropene simply so it stands out on the board. Uh, polypropene, slightly more difficult. This time we've got three carbons and it doesn't matter again where you put your double bond but you've got to make sure you've got the right number of hydrogens in the right places. And again we'd have n lots of propene to make our polymer. So this time, we do exactly the same thing. We take the carbon where the double bond was, and then we draw our rugby post arrangement. Obviously, the bits off the side stop it looking like a rugby post, but you can hopefully see these bits here with the crossbar. Now, let's take our first carbon where our double bond was. Okay, That double bond is broken, and off that carbon we have two hydrogens. Okay, Hydrogen hydrogen as before. The next carbon here where the double bond was, off it we have one hydrogen, brilliant, let's put it up there. And then down here the other bond isn't bonded, isn't to a hydrogen or a chlorine even like we saw in the previous example, it's bonded to a carbon which is attached to three hydrogens. So I've got to show this down here, so I'll show it bonding to a carbon which has also been attached to three hydrogens. And that is the repeat unit of polypropene, which is a very, which is a bit stronger than polyethene, if I'm honest with you. Uh, and we use polypropene to make carbonated drinks bottles. So Coke bottles, Sprite bottles, fizzy water bottles are all made of polypropene because it's just that little bit stronger than polyethene. Now these polymers are, ex they don't break down. They do not biodegrade, uh, which in some ways is very good. Obviously, if you you want plastic for a window frame, you don't really want it biodegrading uh, while it's uh, on the side of your house. However, um, when we throw away our drinks bottles, when we throw away our carrier bags, that's also a problem because then we really would want the plastic to biodegrade, but addition polymers don't. So the ability of not biodegrading is obviously a plus if we want window frames and obviously really we don't want our drink bottles decomposing while they're containing drinks but it's also a minus because they become very difficult to dispose of. And that's the end of this clip.